Achieving financial success isn't just about what you know. It's about how you put that knowledge into action. Teaching good money habits can be challenging, even for intelligent individuals. Typically, financial topics like investing, personal finance management, and business decision-making are presented using numbers and formulas that appear to offer clear guidance. However, in reality, people don't base their financial choices solely on calculations. These decisions are made in personal settings such as family discussions or business meetings, where personal history, unique perspectives, emotions, pride, marketing influences, and unusual incentives all play a role. This video summarizes the valuable lessons and advice I've gathered from stories in the book The Psychology of Money, which can help improve your everyday life. Different experiences lead to different opinions. The New York Times wrote an article about how Foxconn, a huge electronics company in Taiwan, treats its workers, and it turns out the conditions there are really bad. Many people who read the article were understandably angry. However, there was an interesting reaction to the story from the nephew of a Chinese worker, who shared his thoughts in the comment section and said, My aunt used to work in what Americans call sweatshops. It was tough work, with long hours, low wages, and not so great working conditions. You know what she did before that? She worked as a prostitute. To me, going from that old lifestyle to working in a sweatshop is an improvement. I believe my aunt would prefer being exploited by a capitalist boss for a bit more money than having her body exploited by several men for very little pay. This is why I get upset about how some Americans think. We don't have the same opportunities as those in the West. Our government and our country are different. Yes, working in a factory is hard, and it could be better, but only when you compare it to American jobs. I'm not sure how to feel about this. Part of me wants to argue passionately, and part of me wants to understand, but mostly it shows how different experiences can lead to very different opinions on topics that some people think should be straightforward. One of the main challenges when learning how to handle money is figuring out what's due to luck, skill, or risk. However, there are two things that can help guide you in the right direction. Be mindful of who you praise and admire. Be cautious about looking down on others and wishing to avoid their path. Also, don't assume that every result in life is solely because of effort and choices. When my son was born, I wrote him a letter that said, Some people are lucky to be born into families that value education, while others aren't as fortunate. Some are born into strong economies that encourage entrepreneurship, while others face war and poverty. I want you to succeed, and I want you to earn your success. However, remember that not all success comes solely from hard work, and not all poverty is the result of laziness. When people barely have enough to survive, their involvement in crime can be understood differently. A Nigerian scam artist once told the New York Times that he felt guilty for scamming others, but poverty will not make you feel the pain. Keep this in mind when you judge people, including yourself. Therefore, instead of paying too much attention to individual people and their stories, it's better to look at general trends. Examining one particular person can be tricky because we often focus on extreme cases like billionaires, CEOs, or big failures that make headlines. These extreme cases are often not very useful for applying their lessons to our own lives because they're usually influenced by extreme luck or risk factors, making them less relevant to everyday situations. Getting wealthy versus staying wealthy. Successful investing doesn't always mean making brilliant choices. It's more about consistently avoiding mistakes. Planning is essential, but the most crucial part of any plan is considering that it might not go as expected. Many investments fail not because they were completely wrong, but because they were mostly right in a situation that required them to be exactly right. Having room for error, often called a margin of safety, is one of the most underestimated factors in finance. 
This can take various forms, such as sticking to a tight budget, being adaptable in your thinking, and having a flexible timeline, anything that allows you to be content with a range of possible outcomes. It's not the same as being overly cautious. Being cautious means avoiding a certain level of risk, while the margin of safety means increasing your chances of success at a given level of risk by improving your odds of survival. The magic of it is that the larger your margin of safety, the less precise your approach needs to be to achieve a favorable result. Having a balanced personality that combines optimism about the future with a healthy dose of caution is crucial. Optimism usually means believing things will turn out well, but there's more to it. Practical optimism is having faith that, overall, the odds are in your favor, and even if there are difficult times along the way, things will eventually work out positively. You understand that there will be challenges and hardships. You can be hopeful that the long-term path is upwards and to the right, while also being realistic that the journey from now until then will be filled with obstacles, and it will always be that way. These two perspectives can coexist. Freedom. The best reward that money can provide is having control over your time. The highest form of wealth is having the freedom to wake up every day and say, I can do whatever I want today. People aim for more wealth to find more happiness. Happiness can be complex since it varies for each person. But if there's one thing that makes most people happy, it's having control over their lives. The power to do what you want, when you want, with whomever you want, for as long as you want, is invaluable. It's the most significant reward that money can provide. Man in the car paradox. No one is as impressed with your possessions as you are. When you see someone driving a fancy car, you really think, whoa, that person is cool. Instead, you think, whoa, if I had that car, people would think I'm cool. Subconscious or not, this is how many people think. It's a paradox. People often seek wealth to show others they should be liked and admired. In reality, those people often don't admire you just because you're wealthy. Instead, they use your wealth as a measure of their own desire to be liked and admired. In a letter I wrote after my son was born, I said, you might think you want an expensive car, a fancy watch, and a huge house, but I'm telling you, you don't. What you truly want is respect and admiration from other people, and you might believe that having expensive things will get you that respect. However, it almost never does, especially from the people you really want to respect and admire you. Saving money. People have more control over their ability to save money than they realize. You can save by spending less, and you spend less when you want fewer things. Wanting less is easier when you care less about what others think of you. Sometimes, money is influenced more by your thoughts and feelings than by financial facts. You don't need a specific reason to save. Some folks save for a house, a car, or retirement, and that's great. However, saving doesn't always have to be tied to a particular purchase. You can save just for the sake of saving, and you should consider doing so everyone should. While it makes sense to save for a specific goal in a predictable world, ours is anything but predictable. Saving acts as a safety net against life's unexpected surprises, which can catch you off guard at the worst times. Another advantage of saving without a spending goal is gaining control over your time. We all know that money can buy tangible things, but the less obvious intangible benefits often go unnoticed. These intangible benefits of money can have a greater impact on your happiness than the obvious things we typically save for. Saving without a specific purpose provides you with options and flexibility, the power to wait, and the opportunity to seize opportunities. It grants you the freedom to think, make choices on your terms, and take control of your future. Every bit of savings is like reclaiming a piece of your future that would have been dictated by someone else. Having more control over your time and choices is becoming one of the most valuable assets in the world. Studying history shows us how things change, 
but it's ironic that we often use it as a guide for the future. Stanford professor Scott Sagan once said, Things that have never happened before happen all the time. New things happen all the time, and history is full of surprising events. Despite this, investors and economists sometimes rely too much on history as a foolproof guide for the future. It's important to understand economic and investing history, as it helps us set expectations, learn from past mistakes, and provide some general ideas about what usually works. However, it's not a crystal ball predicting the future. Many investors fall into a trap where they think past events can perfectly predict what will happen in the future. But in fields like economics and investments, where progress relies on innovation and change, this approach often leads to mistakes. You will change. Planning for the long term is tough because both the world around you and your own goals and desires evolve over time. While long-term financial planning is crucial, it's important to acknowledge that things change. It's easy to say, we can't predict the future, but it's even harder to admit that you might not know what you want in the future, even right now. The reality is that most of us don't. Making lasting long-term decisions becomes challenging when what you think you'll want in the future is likely to shift. People often recognize how much they've changed in the past but tend to underestimate how much their personalities, desires, and goals will change in the future. Psychologists call this the end of history illusion. According to Harvard psychologist Daniel Gilbert, at every stage of our lives, we make decisions that significantly impact our future selves. However, when we become those future selves, we may not be happy with the choices we made earlier. For example, Young people pay to remove tattoos they got as teenagers, middle-aged individuals rush into or out of marriages, and older adults work hard to lose weight that they worked hard to gain in their middle age. This cycle has continued since the beginning of time. We should avoid the extreme ends of financial planning. Assuming you'll be happy with a very low income, or choosing to work endless hours in pursuit of a high one, increases the odds that you'll one day find yourself at a point of regret. The end of history illusion teaches us that people adapt to most situations, so the initial benefits of an extreme plan, whether it's having very little or having almost everything, fade over time. However, the downsides of these extremes, like not being able to afford retirement or realizing you've spent your life chasing money, can lead to lasting regrets. These regrets become even more painful when you change course and feel like you have to rush twice as fast to make up for lost time. The seduction of pessimism. Think about Japan after World War II in the late 1940s. The country was devastated in every way economically, industrially, culturally, and socially. In 1946, a harsh winter caused a famine limiting food to less than 800 calories per person each day. Now, picture a scenario where a Japanese scholar had written an article during this difficult time saying, don't lose hope, everyone. In our lifetime, our economy will grow almost 15 times larger than it was before the war ended. Our life expectancy will nearly double. Our stock market will provide exceptional returns like few countries have ever seen. Unemployment will stay below 6% for over 40 years. We will lead the world in electronic innovation and corporate management. Eventually, we'll become so wealthy that we'll own some of the most valuable land in the United States. And interestingly, Americans will become our closest allies and will try to learn from our economic success. If someone had said this back then, they would have been laughed at and probably told to see a doctor. But believe it or not, this is exactly what happened in Japan after the war. Pessimism often seems more intelligent and believable than optimism. If you tell someone everything will be fantastic, they might ignore you or doubt you. But if you tell them they're in danger, they'll pay full attention.